Hi folks and uh, welcome back to my channel. You can see I've been playing around here with a new auto sensing probe. That is, it detects audio frequency and radio frequency signals uh, equally as well. It's a contact and non-contact probe all built in one. There's a buffer amp installed here so it's really neutral or a little less gain than what's received. And I'm just attenuating the signal here using a 5 meg potentiometer not to overdrive the uh, amplifier here, which uh, gives me a gain of 60 dB or amplifies the signal approximately 1,000 times. So that's important here for these uh, low RF signals like we would detect here on the uh, band switch itself. Let's uh, take it for a little test drive here. I'll demo it real quick and then we'll uh, open it up here and I'll show you guys the uh, circuit and share the uh, schematic if you want to build one for yourself. You see, it's only six years in the make, yet they've marked a significant duty. Glory at 7.30 a.m. gives you an idea how the uh, circuit uh, performs. So let's take a look real quick at my uh, breadboard design. This is my uh, input signal here, whether it be uh, audio frequency or a modulated RF carrier. Again, I'm going through a blocking cap in the uh, real design that's increased up to uh, 630 or higher. You can see I'm going through a variable resistor, that being 5 meg ohm. That controls the uh, input impedance here to the uh, gate of the JFET. The uh, source itself is uh, grounded back through a uh, 10k ohm resistor. And of course, since this is not an amplifier but a buffer, the uh, capacitor itself comes off the source itself, so that'll be our output. The uh, drain is connected directly back to the positive rail. So uh, here's where the uh, magic occurs. You can see the 1N34A here. That does the uh, demodulating itself of the uh, modulated RF carrier. And then we have an RF choke. The RF choke itself is uh, 10 millihenries, and that's uh, by design. And uh, more on that real quick is the uh, audio signal comes in, goes through the JFET, and uh, makes its way back to this part of the circuit here. The uh, reactance of the RF choke itself will block the RF carriers that will allow the audio frequencies to uh, pass through. So they pass through here, through this capacitor, back to the output capacitor, back to the uh, amplifier itself with 60 dB of gain. Now when the RF signal comes in, it's uh, demodulated by the uh, diode here, the 1N34A. The uh, RF choke itself here will block the RF frequencies. And of course, we have two capacitors here in series back to ground and that allows the uh, diode here to uh, demodulate the uh, RF modulation from the uh, carrier itself which you guys were seeing. So that's how simple the uh, design is. The uh, 1N34A again the uh, 10 millihenry choke. If I chose a uh, RF choke with less value more of the RF frequencies, of course, would sneak in. So I can get uh, below 400 uh, kilohertz, around 300 kilohertz or so. I'll show that on the uh, scope before this design itself is impaired uh, by RF um, signals, not allowing the uh, demodulation to occur properly. The RF choke could be increased to uh, work at a uh, lower frequency.
the demodulated signal here at uh, 455 uh, kilohertz. And let me switch this over. That's at uh, 300 kilohertz, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And I'm actually going lower in frequency. So you can see a higher value choke would uh, allow you to operate this circuit lower in frequency. Here I'm about 150 kilocycles or so, if that's important to you. You can still see the uh, modulation, the demodulation occur, but it's not as sharp due to the RF carrier. Let me uh, turn the uh, modulation off and just go back to the CW carrier and you'll see what I'm talking about. And the CW carrier at uh, 455 uh, kilohertz. And you can see as I lower the uh, frequency here, how the uh, RF choke allows the uh, RF carrier to pass through. So it gives you a general idea how you can use an RF choke to uh, limit the uh, band pass of an RF carrier or alike. And a quick look at the audio frequency response here in the circuit. There's some roll off extremely high, but uh, in the AM broadcast band or alike, I'm really only interested in things up to about uh, 5 kilohertz or so. As you can see, the choke itself, that being that 10 millihenry choke, as well as the uh, capacitors that I chose for the design, allow the uh, audio to pass uh, without being compromised. And the demodulated output here, which looks uh, very clean as well. Here's the uh, prototype build. And again, many uh, do-overs in here to get things uh, perfected the way I wanted as far as performance. So uh, the uh, layout can be uh, better optimized. You can see the uh, circuit board that fits this particular enclosure is uh, more common. It's a uh, 20 by 80 millimeter board. So uh, no modifications had to be made there. And everything else here was a uh, nice uh, fit. So let's go to the schematic and look at a few things here. Before we do, a few things to call out here on the probe. There's a probe inside the probe. And to reduce the uh, capacitance itself, this uh, resistor was used here between ground in the outer shield. I'll expand more on that in just a bit and then we'll do some testing here and I'll show you the uh, capacitance itself. Here I was mindful trying to get the capacitance itself of the probe to ground at uh, a minimum point. Those uh, high impedance circuits are very sensitive to uh, loading from uh, capacitance. So um, this seemed to work out pretty well. A few tricks that I uh, used here using some resistors, which I'll expand on in just a moment. All right, let me show you guys how I used a, a few resistors internally that I mentioned just a bit ago, in addition to external here on the probe. 
to uh, minimize the uh, capacitance itself and the uh, loading effect. The uh, band switch location right here is a very high impedance location, so just a little bit of uh, capacitance will load the circuit, thus you're not going to be able to transfer that energy back to the uh, probe itself. So let me turn this up just for a moment, and I'm going to attach the uh, probe here to the band switch location. And you'll notice uh, you don't hear much of a change whatsoever in the amplitude of the uh, signal coming from the loudspeaker itself behind me. So minimizing again the uh, loading effect here will uh, transfer that signal back to the uh, probe itself. The, uh, through the buffer back over to the amplifier to be amplified. If I grab my original signal tracer that I built, I didn't uh, use any of these tricks. And uh, let me grab it real quick and I'll just show you guys the uh, difference in loading that uh, it has. And uh, you can hear by me attaching the uh, probe here to that part of the circuit, we're pretty much killing the signal. So again, with me doing that, most most of the signal itself is not going to make it through the uh, probe to be amplified itself due to the loading effect. So big improvement with uh, this design over my original design, which could be modified very easily. And a quick look here at my shop drawings. Again, these being the as-built, it'd be a good starting point for folks out there that want to take this design and enhance it. Again, I elected to use the uh, JFET two purposes, the uh, high input impedance, in addition, a very low capacitance there on the gate, uh, typically around four to five picofarads. So that's a big advantage there not to uh, load the circuit itself down. And you guys saw a few tricks that I played there on the probe itself just to uh, keep the uh, capacitance itself at a minimum. So again, you could build off of this design or you could eliminate the uh, JFET and just use the inductor and the uh, capacitors to uh, pass the signal along as well. And the shop drawings here for the uh, probe itself. You can see the 1 4 inch brass tubing with the 3 32nd inch brass tubing internal, which creates a capacitor. I'm able to uh, minimize the effect of that through uh, both R4 and R3. R3 isolates the uh, probe itself from ground. And again, there's a grommet there. So the outer probe, the 1 4 inch, is not connected itself to the enclosure itself, so keep that in mind. I had already mentioned I used a couple uh, circuits here that were already pre-built for the amplifier just to test the uh, new probe design. And uh, this worked uh, really much better than I expected. Kind of a out-of-the-box uh, thinking here. I took a Max 9814 that I had and remove the microphone itself. Again, its uh, primary purpose is a microphone amplifier that keeps the output fixed at two volts peak to peak max. And removing that, you can see I've coupled that directly back to the probe here using the uh, 3.5 millimeter stereo jack panel. This side right here having a DC voltage on it to feed that JFET and the other side, the uh, mono audio. Again, this uh, particular Max 9814 is uh, powered from a five volt source. So you can see I have a voltage regulator here, the 78L05 for my nine volt source. And then of course, nine volts here feeding the LM386. This particular module was originally set for 200 gain and I've uh, reduced that down to uh, 20. That's all I needed. Preset the uh, potentiometer to a uh, comfortable level. Again, the MAX has a built-in uh, automatic gain control. Use that one attenuator control there on the probe itself. 
and not have to get back in here and touch this adjustment here. I'll share the uh, schematic again. These are just uh, pieced together here. Very simple design if you want to uh, reproduce this for yourself. All of my shop drawings here, the as-built, will be on the Google Drive. So just check out the uh, video description, the show more, and you'll see a link there to uh, download a PDF and or the uh, JPEG files here. Again, of my uh, shop drawings themselves in as-built design. I appreciate you guys uh, taking time to uh, watch and the uh, new subscribers to my channel out there as well. Everybody uh, take care and stay well. Thanks again for viewing.